If you're thinking about washing your trailer, there's a few things you're going to need. First, I think it's really uh, good to do this on a, a day when there might be a little shade. Not only does that mean that the water isn't evaporating as quickly, but it, it means it's a little easier to work. Secondly, obviously you need a bucket and a hose and a long brush to brush things on the trailer. And thirdly, you need a ladder. You see here I'm using a pretty short step ladder, and that means I'm not getting actually really up onto the roof. I'm relying on the long arm of my brush to give me reach. But if you had a taller ladder, that would uh, work better. So, you know, if you, if you got one, use it. Let me show you the bucket and brush that I'm using. I have a long-handled brush. It actually has a hose attachment uh, that I could use if I wanted to, um, but it's just a standard sort of auto cleaning brush. It is important to rinse the brush between um, sort of passes on the trailer. So this bucket that has two compartments has been great because I put soapy water in one compartment and clean water in the other compartment. And as I take the brush off the trailer when it's full of dirt, I dunk it in the clean water and then I reload it with soap and the soapy water. And of course, over time, they start to look the same, but uh, you get the gist of it. And for soap, I'm just using a standard uh, foamy car wash. I have no reason to believe that this isn't fine for the trailer and I've been using it for years. In terms of hoses, I have one of these um, flexible latex expanding hoses. If you haven't tried these at home, they're way better than um, a big heavy hose to carry around. And on all of my hoses, I put a brass, um, and I think brass is important, shut off valve so that it's easy to switch out attachments and things without getting soaking wet. In terms of a plan of attack, I really like to approach this in sections, not only because it's a big job and it will take a while and you wanna keep track of where you're at, but because it really does make it easier. So I, I do the top of the trailer first on the basic principle that you should always clean from the top of a room or top of a, an object downward because as the dirt comes showering off that item it will dirty what's below. And then I basically work by sections starting from the back and moving all the way to the front and I do the front last and there's some special considerations there. Um, but I do it by section and essentially beginning and ending where natural breaks in the panels occur. So the whole rear is sort of one section the whole side is another section, the whole front is a section, and then of course you have the other side and the roof. So you're really looking at five total separate sections along the way, um, and that breakdown seems to have worked pretty well. It takes me about three and a half hours total to do this work when I'm just sort of working steadily on it, but I have broken it up over a couple days, and it's not as satisfying in terms of looking at the finished product all at once, but it, it does work pretty well. I mean, remember that as soon as you're done cleaning it, you're gonna get it out in the world and get it dirty again. So who really cares if you clean it all at once? As you're cleaning, two things to remember. The first is that this belt line is a real collection point for grime. So you really wanna brush that getting the top and also the bottom as well. Stuff, stuff collects under there uh, pretty easily. And um, running a finger along there is not such a bad idea. The second thing is the aluminum does have a grain. So you do wanna go this way on the aluminum, not up and down. And um, that's, uh, not everybody believes that, but that is what's in the owner's manual and it's really simple to do. So I really recommend that you go back and forth sideways on the big panels rather than up and down. So the first step in washing, of course, is uh, just hosing things down. And after you do, you're gonna find that there's still a fair amount of debris on the trailer. Um, it's hard because you have to sort of blow your hose this way to push things off that side of the trailer and then again this way to uh, to sort of uh, push things off this side. And I find that you have to go sort of back and forth to do that effectively. But regardless of that, once you are done hosing off the big pits, you're gonna find that there's just this sort of layer of grime. And unfortunately, unless you're gonna power wash, which really is a no-no, don't power wash, um, I know there are differing opinions on that, but unless you're gonna power wash, you gotta use a brush on this and you gotta actually touch it. So there are places where I'm able to brush on my trailer. And in fact, because my solar panels are so high, I can actually get my brush under there. 
Um, but sometimes you actually just got to use the brushes that your mama gave you and get in there with your hands into these little nooks and crannies. And I think that that's especially important in tight spots where you have um, electrical boxes or vents or things like that because those spots do collect the most debris and filth, but those are also the spots where you have the most vulnerability to water and other types of infiltration. So, so use the brush for sure, but also don't be afraid to, you know, get in there with your fingers and get around things. Um, for those keeping score at home, I know this is a terrible job I did with the Silka Flex. Um, that's what happens when you use a teenager as your skilled labor. But, um, but it is sealed properly. So it's ugly and it gets dirty, but it is sealed properly. And um, I probably will go back and, and repair that or do it better uh, before I die. Pretty grungy on the roof of my trailer right now. Um, and already I've done quite a bit of cleaning, but it's also a good time to inspect. So I'm looking at these kinds of seals to just make sure that they're laying down flat. Mine are at four years old, and they say to replace them every five years, but I'm, I don't live in Arizona, so they're not taking as much of a beating. Um, one thing I noticed though is uh, this is the vent cap for my, um, my gray tank, and if you look at it closely, you can see that it has a nice dome on it to keep um, the runoff off of that cap. Um, I've owned my trailer for three years, and I never really noticed uh, that that dome was there. And when I used my black uh, pipe to run solar wires through, I reinstalled the cap upside down. So it's interesting what you find when you just sort of look around up here. Um, and certainly a cleaning helps with that. Uh, so uh, it's a worthwhile endeavor for a nice warm spring day. Well, look here. Look what I found. Apparently this wrench has been rolling around on top of my trailer for like uh, more than a year. <clears throat> what size is it? 10 millimeters. Is anybody surprised by that? It's amazing what you find up here during cleaning. Ah, look at that. All clean. It's a beautiful thing. It actually squeaks. You can see it's just getting a lot nicer up here. I'll have to go back and like take a look at things like this where there's there's dirt in the seam. I'm not really trying to do a detail here. I'm just trying to get the gunk off because it's still pollen season. But I do like her to be ready for, uh, for the road. In the category of uh, cleaning your trailer pro tips, here's this fridge vent. And actually if you go in this side, comes out that side really good way to flush it out and of course you want to reverse the process and flush out the side too here's another interesting thing that I've uh, found on my trailer while inspecting it uh, as I clean it I installed this antenna last year and um, it's doing just fine but you can see that the Cicaflex there is actually scorched and isn't that interesting? So I'm betting that that's a combination of the fact that the antenna mount is black, so it absorbs a lot of heat, but probably more so the back of this here, right here, is probably reflecting right onto that antenna and cooking it. So I'm gonna come back once things are dry and maybe just put some tape on there or some something on the back of that fin to dull that reflection and uh, prevent that from, you know, catching fire. Okay, so the front of the trailer is like pretty special uh, and different to, to clean than the rest of it. You can see here I've already lifted the sunshade up on the center window. And the reason why is I want to show you these things right here. Um, this is what allows you to retract the sunshade on the curved windows on the side. And when you look at them, they look like screws, but they are not screws. They are just toggles. So you do use a screwdriver to operate them but you just turn them like a quarter turn or a third of a turn and you'll feel it sort of clunk into place. So here I'll do the other one here. That's all I turned it, right? That was, that was about a quarter turn. And uh, let me show you what those look like when you pull these off, right? So those are loose now. And this is what they look like. You can see that they're actually not screws at all, but toggles like you would find on a, I don't know, London Fog uh, raincoat from 30 years ago. Okay, I don't know what these are, the technical name for them is, but they're just toggles. And if you look closely in the hole that they go into, you can see that the hole is sort of horizontal. 
and that's what you're doing. You're, you're sliding the toggle into the horizontal spot in the hole, and then when you twist it, it's uh, preventing it from coming out. So now when I peel this back, and it does go all the way back, you're going to see that, focus, you can see that there's a, just a bunch of junk in here resting at the bottom of this frame. And look along the belt line here, it's just really a mess. Uh, up here, it's collected as well. So uh, what I'm trying to point out is that the reason I leave the, the front end to last is because a lot of junk collects in here and it's going to take your, your sort of maximum effort. Maximum effort. And it's going to take your like maximum effort of... Ah! to clean it and one good thing to do to start with that cleaning process is to use the dirty water that you have left from the rest of the trailer because this is just filthy you know so you might as well use the dirty water from the rest of the cleaning to sort of knock down the first layer of filth here and then use nice fresh clean water uh, mix up a fresh bat a batch of soap to uh, to give this a nice nice clean fresh appearance right on the front of the trailer. I'm not sure you can tell the difference in the video, but uh, from where I'm standing, the trailer looks way better. Uh, but it's really not about any specific element being cleaner. It's about the whole thing presenting just a better sort of overall presentation and shine. Uh, again, I wasn't going for a detail. I was just going for the kind of cleanliness that helps things stay uh, functioning properly and makes them look good enough for presentation. Um, but uh, it makes a, makes a big difference, even just a quick cleaning, well, relatively quick cleaning over the course of two or three hours like I gave uh, the trailer today. Here's a pretty good view of what the top and uh, sides of the trailer look like now that uh, things have been cleaned up. So it uh, makes a pretty big difference and uh, makes it look great too. That leaf, that leaf, it's bothering me. So uh, that's really it and uh, I hope that helps.